So, okay everyone, here we go with another project. Um, this one I've been asked to do by a friend of mine. It is a King Kong RC, uh, 112 scale, uh, 6x6. Um, what looks like a Russian Zill. So it's the uh, CA30. So, never done one of these. Very excited about this one. Um, like a new challenge, it is manufactured in China. So let's have a look at what's in the box. It has unbelievable stimulation, handsome appearance and infinite power. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. And sturdy style. Yeah, handsome appearance. I'm pretty sure that's the truck. So let's have a look at what's in the box. Ooh. So we have the instructions. Let's see how good they are. Chinese instructions aren't renowned for being the best. Have a small booklet for the back of the truck. Tells us what we need to use just here. And yes, that is the back part. So, what's in here? Looks like we've got um, revised parts. Not sure what that is. Anyway, we'll have a look later. And a couple of spacers. So, hmm. Have a look at those a little bit later on. I'll put them back in the big bag. So not lose them. Assuming that the main instructions is the chassis. Yeah, quite predictably. So it doesn't have all the information that you get in a Tamiya, but I'm not going I'm not really going to be comparing it with a Tamiya because it's not claiming to be copy of a Tamiya so yeah looks pretty straightforward um, bit of extra wire 300 millimeters now what do we get here we tilt this box up this is how we see so we have a metal um, transfer case yeah it uh, seems pretty good it is aluminium pre-assembled very good detail so back in there this looks to be the main um, transmission yeah King Kong RC Looks like it's all nicely greased up in there. Single speed. So, seems very, very stiff. Yep. I'm sure the motor will have enough torque to turn that, but I will be investigating that as it goes. So, yeah. Gearbox. Obvious parts here. It is a 6x6. That feels very, very free indeed. Uh, steer axle. It does look like it's got a um, very good steer angle, actually. And uh, no diff locks. Um, so you can't open the diffs. They are just permanently locked. There's no cable there that suggests that we can open them. And I'm assuming two axles, fixed axle, not no differential. So cornering might be interesting. Yep, 
and that's the rear axle and this one should be the center axle no so it must have a drive shaft going to each which would make sense because the transfer case has one input here and then that would be for the output for the front this would be the output for the rear and middle axle I'm just guessing so we'll have to have a close look at those a couple of uh, simulation uh, fuel tanks that we can take apart oh, we can put things in there like the light kit so we can hide light kits in there another one does have holes in here so yes we can we can uh, mm, we've got things forced into the foam just here and these are some steel plates in fact we've got some pushed in here yep all feels quite good quality actually which I would expect because it's not really a cheap item uh, but what looks like some servo mounts and a motor plate no motor so at the request of the guy that I'm building for Kieran has supplied me with a Carson poison motor so that will be going in let's take this off we have tires which seem pretty pretty good actually they're not too hard like we usually find um, another tray of parts pre-assembled suspension plastic springs which seem to do the job aluminium or aluminum wherever you are in the country or in the world so yeah that's uh, all very good at the moment front suspension look at that detail that's fantastic all pre-assembled all we need to do is to take these off put it on the axle and uh, yeah that's it's pretty good that very good detailing so my first impression is I like it more metal uh, brackets tucked away on the inside more parts individually wrapped oh, another bearing carrier let's have a look What we have here, we have more metal parts, looks like suspension hangers. Yeah, looks like suspension hangers. I'll stick them back in there, don't need all these bags. Ah, suspension link rods. So this section here seems to be, and they're metal as well, with uh, what looks like poly bushing. They look really good and they are pretty soft but yeah with the uh, bushing inserts already in there I am quite impressed with it actually and then more metal parts what are we 
where that's come from. Yeah, left and right. We'll find out what these are later. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty impressed with the quality, actually. Um, I'm not going to say it's a cheap Chinese product because it's certainly not cheap. What do we have here? We have metal drive shafts that actually feel like steel. Another metal drive shaft. And another one. Let's have a look actually at how good these are. Right, hex drive. Yeah, a little E clip there. There's no play in that, there's no just in, in and out. No real play in that, so that's very good tolerance. Might put a little bit of uh, lube on that just to uh, extend the life of it. So that's that, and on this section here we have a nice wooden crate. Aha, uh -huh. just fixing holes and maybe put a light box in there. And that obviously goes on the back. Um, lots of wooden parts. Lots of wooden parts actually and the uh, quality of them is very, very good indeed. Very good. No real splinters. Oh yeah. And um, what's this? Oh, this is the... You. We've got the main frame rails here. Wow, look at that. Pressed steel. Wow, that is quite good. And there's no real um, sharp edges. There's nothing. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm impressed. No burrs or anything. Not even sharp corners. Wow. Well done, China. They're actually, you know. Making a very good, what I can see, very good quality product. That looks like a cast aluminium part. Again, no edges on it. No burrs, no swage or anything. And then... So they feel like they're cast, and these look like they're CNC'd. They've got threaded. That looks like the spacer for a servo. So yeah, very good. Um, that's going to be um, enamelled or powder coated. Powder coated, yeah. Quite impressed, actually. Looks like it's a front bumper. It's got some glue on it from something. That'll all clean off. Wow, it's got inserts in the back look. Again, there's no sharp edges, no sharp corners. King Kong RC.
Yeah, pretty much the same story for the other side. No sharp corners. No edges by me. And we have parts pressed in into the edges, so I'm gonna make sure that we don't see don't throw any of this away. Part brilliant. Actually impressed with that. Let's put that back in there. So let me put this back in here. And let's see what's in the box. Aha, cab. So well, it already looks like those parts have uh, fallen off. And if that's going to be a sign of, yeah, that's slightly harder, more brittle than Tamiya. So. Yeah, just hope they haven't all got scratched up in the bottom whilst they've been on the container. And then we have uh, more parts that just seem to be rattling about loose. Oh, that seems quite good. Doors, I'm assuming they have hinges to open them the grill I would imagine they are the hinges let's have a get stuck into this it's the main body of the cab oh. molding marks oh and some some scratch into the roof mind you I've never seen a shiny Russian truck this looks like it's military anyway, so. Mm. Brilliant. So I've just got floor and wheel arches. Right. Put that back in there. And, uh, what's in that final box King Kong RC Rah. and this one what is this ah the cab so we've got an instruction manual for the um, main chassis, one for the back and one for the cab. Yeah, pretty good. Use good quality hex drivers to avoid stripping the heads. Use thread locks when putting metal screws into metal parts. Do not over tighten screws or you may strip the thread. Yes, always a good tip. This one, let's have a look at what is in this box. Well, as expected, we have nice packs of pins, servo horns, a 14 tooth pinion gear, wow, oh my goodness, the bags inside, bags, inside bags, wow look at those, they are tiny, they're actually hexagon heads. Uh, 
they are all different lengths m2.5 six millimeter eight millimeter six and five millimeter wow i wonder if my electronic screwdriver would be a good option for those mm, maybe not button head bolts countersunk bolts here button head bolts m2s and 2.5 here absolutely uh, hundreds of bolts so more bags of brackets wow oh, i can't say as i'm disappointed in it so what are we going to do with this is quite simply we will be fitting this King Kong RC with Carson motor. We will be putting two genuine Futaba servos. These are in packets, not boxes. Now I have had this light kit for a long time. Never really put it in anything. It's just it's not a Tamiya, right? It's a it's a copy. And um, so I'll put that in there. We have, if we don't drop it all over the place, a Sense sound system, an ESS Jewel, which is a very, very good sound system, which I will be doing a review on that. That will also be going in. And what do we control it with? But the... Uh, Standard 1060 quick run. I have been told that this kit has um, a lot of um, swarf in the threads. So I'm going to have to chase the threads out. And I have um, size guide here. There. And pack of thread chasers they're in a bag with oil so they're all kept together these are very very fine uh, jewelers types so use them for uh, just chasing the threads out so I can screw a bolt into those and it'll tell me what size they are and then use a the corresponding thread chaser um so that is about it now kieran who has asked me to build this for him sent me a set of drivers that are all hexagon of different sizes right down to 1.5 millimeter so yeah he sent me these to assist me with uh, the build so thank you for those Kieran and can't wait to get stuck into this and here is the truck spread out so got the cab put the bag under there just like that the axles the transmission The suspension parts, suspension links. We have three manuals: one for the main cab, uh, main chassis; one for the cab; one for the body. We have an absolute pile of fixings. I'm not going to be decanting these into a big pack, uh, big tubs like I did with the Tamiya build. I will be looking at these labels very carefully, making sure that I put the right screw in the right hole look at them oh my god that is insane the main 
bed of the truck seems to be made of plastic. Wooden parts. We have to make sure that we count how many holes are in each. These two are the same, them two are different. That's uh, one piece, that's one piece. This is two. Then we have these two, which are not the same. And these two, which are the same. We have this, these two are the same, these two are the same. So they're in pairs. So I'm assuming they're going to be left and right. And look what we have here. Beadlock wheels. So that only means that we're going to have a hell of a lot of bolts going round these wheels. Wow. Yeah. And the tyres, they have inserts. So they are quite, quite good actually. Um, they are directional. And you have to figure out which. Is there a sign on it? I don't think there are. But yeah, King Kong RC. Ah, six of those. So yes, this is my table where all the additional parts, two servos, light kit, motor, sound system and ESC will be fitting a um, Spectrum receiver because it will be um, using his Spectrum radio. So anyway, that's the unboxing. Thank you, Kieran, for giving me the opportunity of building this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be thanking you afterwards because look at all those screws that's insane um, but I'm going to so enjoy building this so yes give this a comment if you like what you see um, subscribe because you'll get a notification when we uh, we get onto the build I'm not going to do 20 episodes like the last one um, I'm just going to be a part one and part two. What I might do is part one for the chassis, part two for the cab, part three. I don't know how it's going to pan out, but yeah, don't miss this one. See you later.